Okay, let's take a look at question 30 in topic set 7. This question actually incorporates a couple of different concepts from topics we've discussed before. So one of the topics is the de Broglie wavelength, which is the wavelength of a particle. And so the reason I know that this question has something to do with that is because it's telling me that there's an atom and it's moving at a certain speed at a certain temperature and it has a wavelength. So the wavelength and the atom moving at a given speed tells me that that's a question related to the the Broglie wavelength concept. And remember that that concept is that an atom moving at high enough speed would have a wave-like properties and the wave could be measured. And the way you calculate that wavelength is by taking Planck's constant and dividing that by the mass of the particle times its velocity. Now the other related concept is root mean square velocity. So this is something we discussed when we were talking about gases. And in fact, the atom is in the gas phase. And you remember that the way we figure out the root mean square velocity or shortened as URMS is by taking the square root of 3 times the gas constant times temperature over the molar mass of that element. And what we're trying to find is the atom itself. What is atom? What is the atom that uh, satisfy this particular condition? All right, to know the atom, then I'm going to need the molar mass, right? And so we need to solve for M somehow, okay? But how do we relate these two things together? Well, remember that it's saying that you're moving moving at a certain velocity. The de Broglie wavelength says to us that the wavelength of the uh, atom is generated when it's moving at a certain speed. So that V here is really just equal to the URMS in this case, okay? Because they're both speed, right? And so if you have that, then you can rearrange this equation now to solve for URMS. And you can say that URMS should then equal to H over M times the de Broglie wavelength. But remember in the other equation, URMS is also equal equal to 3RT over M. One more thing we need to remember is M or molar mass is the same as the mass of one mole of a substance or in other words the way we can write this is that it's the mass of one particle times Avogadro's number right the number of particles in one mole. I'll just put out the things that we know already. Planck's constant of course we know right the lambda is given in the question 23.1 picometer. Gas constant we know. Temperature is also given in the question 100 degrees Celsius. Celsius. Avogadro's number we know. So the only thing that we don't know in this question is M. And so what we can do is we can isolate the M on one side and then put all the other guys that we know on the other side and try to solve for the mass of one particle. Okay, let's do that real quickly. This is going to be a bit of a math that's involved to isolate the variable. So I'm going to write it out right here. 3RT over M times NA. What I can do now is I can square both sides of this equation and that would give me on the left side h squared over m squared times lambda de Broglie squared and then that's equal to 3 rt over m times na. I can cross multiply so it becomes m times na times h squared equals to m squared times lambda db squared times 3 rt. Okay and remember what I want to do is isolate the m on one side. I have m squared on one and m on the other one that would cancel out. So so that means that M should equal NA times H squared over lambda dB squared times 3RT. Okay. Now once we have that, it's a matter of just plugging in the numbers to figure out exactly what the mass of one of these atoms is. Okay. So this is Avogadro's number and then Planck's constant 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules second. Okay. Joules second. And we're going to square that over the wavelength which we were told is 23.1 picometer so 23.1 10 to the minus 12 meter and then square that and then 3 rt the r if you remember in the calculation of root mean square velocity is 8.314 joules per mole kelvin and then lastly we have the temperature which is 100 celsius or 373 kelvin okay so let's see how the units work out here so the kelvins that's the easy one moles cancel out now when you square this quantity you're going to get joule squared and then second squared. Now joule is the same as kilogram meter squared per second squared. Now I have one of these joules right here at the bottom. So that joules can cancel out with one of these joules that's being squared. So that leaves me with another joule in here, kilogram meter squared per second squared. I happen to have second squared here as well since I'm squaring that second. So that would cancel out with this one. So that leaves me with kilogram times meter squared. I have a meter 
meter square here in the numerator down here. Okay, so that would cancel out with the meter square. So then I'm left with kilograms for each atom. So let's calculate that out. You're going to get 5.324 times 10 to the minus 26. And this is kilogram. Now this is per one atom. As we said earlier, in order to be able to identify the atom, we have to figure out the molar mass of the element. So I'm going to have to multiply this by Avogadro's number to get it in grams per mole. So that many atoms per mole. And then since right now I have it in kilogram, I'm going to have to convert that kilogram to gram, one and 1,000. And multiplying all these together gives me 32 grams per mole at the end, which tells me that this gas must be oxygen.